Hey everybody, welcome back to Thumb FPV. Uh, today we're going to go over some of the issues that I've been experiencing with the Snapmaker 2.0. Now, if you remember, if you watched on my um, Snapmaker 2.0 G-code generating uh, video that I made about a week ago, um, there was a link in there that I had put to the Snapmaker accessory store ah, Snapmaker accessory storage box and I wanted to do, give a demonstration on this and how it worked but I was not able to get this thing to load um, there were some clips that started off and everything I was experiencing was on the first layer this was annoying now, the little clip pieces here on the side those were not coming out too bad but Right off the rip, as soon as I came to the trash can, I was starting to get these really bad bumps. The uh, PLA was not sticking to the bed. It was coming up when I was going back and forth with it. So I'm going to go over some of my settings that I had changed with that and also the actual final problem solving tune that I did to that. Um, now some of my settings are not what you would think that you'd want to use for PLA even though there is a huge variance um, I was able to over time go through and make it to uh, where I didn't even have a first you know piece for the trash can or whatever then jump like 10 over this guy here still got a whole lot of, of um, ripples in it and what I was dealing with I've skipped several pieces on this um, was the, it was like a ruffle chip effect even um, getting tears between the uh, ripples it was looking like fish gills it was it was horrible it was a nightmare got it toned out a little bit barely any there and then came down to the last part where this is not bad even though it's not perfect um, but it was a significant improvement from where I was starting out from. Then the problem that I came to after that was on the base. Now originally the base, I tried doing the first one um, and over long stretches as you can see here I was getting, that's what I was calling the fish gills you guys probably got a different name for it, whatever but the ruffles that it was just not sticking and I'm like man my settings are off my settings are off so I went over the settings I went over the settings and I just I couldn't get anything to work uh, the, I think the best that I had it toned down to was about right here it still wasn't great but it was the best that I had got um, as far as smoothness and consistency leading from the starting edge here out into the print so I was sitting there and I was trying to figure out what to do, how to fix this. And then I had an idea that I decided to test out that I'm going to show you real quick. And I will explain it to you. So here, finally, after many attempts, I have actually successfully completed the first layer for not only the tabs, but the trash can and the actual stand for the Snapmaker 2.0 tooling. Finally got it done. This is the first one <laughs> out of a dozen. As you can see, there's still some inconsistencies through the first layer, but through my, my settings and changing the heat and the flow and a bunch of other things, this is what I was finally able to come up with and it did finally make it to this point. So I have this on pause right now. I just wanted to go ahead and make it to this point. Um, I'm actually going to stop this program and run it again on a couple more colors. I'll show, show you how those go. But for now, uh, we're just going to go into the settings uh, and into software to show how I started out and what I changed. So. Here we are in Snapmaker program. Um, this is the Lubin 3.12.3. Um, going over the settings for my issue I was having with the PLA. As you can see, we have our 
tool holder, our trash can, and our clips over here to the side. Um, now, I'm going to go over the settings first. I made my own little material input over here, hashtag PLA, because going over the initial ones, um, they they were not working. Um, the settings on them, I thought, seemed to be really good, uh, you know, locked in exactly to what they were supposed to be. Um, but I was not getting the results that I wanted out of it. So I went back through and I started going over a few things. And we see here we have our diameter. I mean, you can't change that. Flow is at 100%. Printing temperature 205. Printing temperature for the initial layer is also at 205. Final print temp 200. Heating bed temperature 50. Heating bed temperature for the initial layer is 70. Now for mine, I went through and I tweaked these quite a bit. As you can see, um, my flow, I had to cut all the way down to 75% because there was too much coming out of the nozzle. My printing temperature, I went way up with 225. Um, I don't know yet. I haven't made it to the final layer. I'm still working on getting the first layer done and I want to try it a couple different ways. Uh, the final print temp, I knocked that down to 205. The heating bed temperature, though, uh, I had I put all the way up to 75 for the first layer, and I kept it that way. I probably could take and drop that down maybe 5 or 10 degrees, because um, once the first layer is down, then you're pretty much good. But from there, let's see what else did I change? Um... Okay, so the initial layer speed is at 35. Um, the initial layer travel speed is at 35. I moved these all up for some odd reason. These are able to change in the material. You just can't change some of the settings at the top. Um, what these were originally, I believe the uh, travel speed was down at like 60 so I, I increased that by 20 um, I know that the initial travel speed for the for the initial layer that was all the way down at like pretty I want to say it was like right around 24 and then the print speed was at 18 I moved both of those up to 35 I also did enable the retraction and I did enable the Z-Hop, which is something that is not their standard um, when you first open the software and go to print unless you enable them. But I was still having an issue over here on my print and I couldn't figure out what was going on because I was going and every time... I'm just going to give you the spoiler right now. What I had to do was change the way that it was oriented. It was over here. So by Z is let me check let me change this real quick. Backspace zero. Okay. My Z was there. Um I actually had to look at what was going on and I had way too much of a travel angle if you can see here that little notches on the side so when it was coming across here I noticed that it was in the longer paths that I was getting that raise that I was getting that lip the filament was not sticking to the bed and I'm like, well, how do I finish or fix that so I looked at it from the top view um, and, and the snap maker generally will always print from bottom left to upper right so what I did was I took my Z and I turned it to so so that way when it starts out because it was starting off in this corner 
it was coming through this area over here and then when it was coming from the corner here or when it was coming from the corner over here trying to reach through here is when it was bubbling up so I gave it the shortest amount of work path to go and was able to actually finally get it to complete the whole thing for the first layer I have cleaned the pad I have cleaned the pad cleaned it cleaned it cleaned it um, made sure that the, the filament was clean and everything like that and was just still not having any luck with it um, there may be something off the side that I'm not seeing on this but if any of you guys are for the first time trying to do this and you're having an issue with your first layer sticking down it is not liking to travel very far maybe in software if you have a, a CAD program you could put like a fake wall in there or a, a, a hidden boundary to redirect it after a certain amount of travel length I found that about a good inch and a half which is not very far though is about the most that I have been able to have it go before I start to see those little ripples and imperfections in it so here is in a nutshell my uh, version of how to fix that if you're having a problem with it um, I hope you guys like this if you have any feedback or if you know something about this that I don't feel free to please please put comments in the bottom I am all about learning stuff I don't know kind of new on the 3d printing thing but I'm going through and I'm troubleshooting stuff and when I'm having problems I'm giving you guys my solution so please feel free to give them back I'm all ears um, and you know if you have some constructive criticism if there's something I blatantly missed um, out of you know they say hey there's this button right here you know tell me I'm, I'm cool with that because then you know you help me I can help you I can help somebody else and the whole thing goes around but I hope you guys like this thanks for watching and I'll have another video up soon a shot with the, uh, the purple color this is not the same company this is um, inland filament but I just wanted to try something else and see what the quality of it was um, a little bit more roughness throughout the first layer on here than there was with the black um, also I did actually see a couple holes over here um, the rest of it seems to look pretty good and it still is only the first layer but trying to you know, get it toned right into perfect to zero I don't want any any variances in it that I can help so we got the purple done I'm going to give the white a try and see how that turns out. Alright, so here we have the white. Uh, some people are saying that the white has to be printed about 10 degrees hotter than the black. That's why I did a, a color variance from the dark mid-range, mid uh, did the purple, and then went all the way to the white. Um, you can see this slight little bit of imperfection here. The main part of it is where it decided to stop printing from here and then it jumped over to this part and then came back around and then it came back and it went this way with it um, but that's three different filaments right there three different colors and these settings are working pretty good also with changing the orientation of the way that the print was to eliminate the longest path of travel seemed to help the first layer sit down a little bit easier so hope you guys like this video. Um, we're doing some more troubleshooting on this thing. We got a lot more to go. I didn't get it just to unbox it. I did it to actually check it out and try to do some uh, some good videos with this. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with another video soon.